right. So this, this is another kind of a plan. So we will keep things simple. We will say it is an amount-based plan. OK, and click OK. OK, the effective date is important. 24th. I'll click on OK. And here also it says, what is the plan name? So let's give it a plan name. W, W. Car allowance. Let's say. OK. Now it will ask you, what is the eligibility rule? Who all is eligible for this particular car allowance? Right. So then here also, if you want to restrict this allowance to only a certain population of employees, then you can create that eligibility rule and put it here. OK, I will do that. But let's first create the compensation element. Let's say it is a car allowance. OK. And what is the default amount that you are going to give to your employees? You see, it is zero by default. It is zero, and it is not even mandatory. Right, it is not even mandatory. Only the this part is allowed, is mandatory. The compensation element is mandatory. But we should. We should specify something in the frequency, like how often you are going to give out or the amount that you are going to specify here. What is that amount? Is that an annual amount? Is that a monthly amount? Is it an hourly daily? What is the, what is the frequency of this amount? Let's say it is an annual amount that we are going to get. OK, and we are going to say that. Yeah. The default amount is $1,200. OK. $1,200 annual. That is your car allowance. OK. Right. And then here also we have this apply FTE percentage. So if somebody is a part-time, then the amount will be prorated for that particular worker. OK. And again, are you going to include this in the merit eligibility? Merit and the merit process. If you want to exclude it, like, yeah, I don't care what is your merit. What is your anything? I just want this car allowance to be fixed. Right, it's not going to be increased or decreased as part of your performance is going to be a fixed, fixed amount, so I exclude from the merit plans. Now, just like you have your compensation grade and grade profiles and allowances, also you can have your allowance plan profiles. What does this profiles allow us to do? What? What did the compensation grade profile allow us to do localization, yeah? That was the word I was looking for. It helps for localization. So even here, let's say I said the default amount is 1200 US dollars. But what if I need to assign the same car allowance plan to my managers in the UK as well? Will I pay them $1200? Probably not. Right. Even if it is equivalent, I will still pay them something in the pounds. Right, in a different currency. So this allows us that allowance plan profile allows us to do exactly that. So let me create one allowance plan profile and I will say, OK, it is 1200 USD, for what? Country, United States of America. Correct. This is the same eligibility rule that we used for our compensation grade profile as well. 
isn't it? So here I am saying, okay, if you are in the US, you are going to get $1200, and if you are in my, if you are in UK, you are going to get £900. Okay, and so what will be the eligibility rule? Country, United Kingdom. Understood. That if you are in the US, you will get $1,200 a month. If you are in the UK, you are going to get £900. Yeah, let's say only people of the IT department. Or maybe if you are in IT department and in the US, you get $1,200. If you are in the sales department and in the UK, you get $900. Yes, you can combine multiple eligibility rules or in one eligibility rule as well. You can multiply, you can combine multiple conditions, multiple rule conditions. This is a simple, straightforward rule. Right. Country United Kingdom means that your country is UK. That's what it means. But if you want to make it a bit more like realistic or maybe a bit more complicated. Yes, you can put in more conditions in one rule, or you can add multiple rules here as well. Okay. Eligibility rules. You are flexible in using eligibility rules. You can use multiple conditions in one eligibility criteria. Okay. Now, here there is something called as plan eligibility. What does this specify and how is it different from the eligibility rule that we have at the at the bottom of our screen in the plan profile? Why are these two different? This eligibility rule versus diseligibility. Who should get this allowance? That is what the plan eligibility will tell us. Let's say I want to do it only for managers or above. Okay, only managers are above will get a car allowance. Let's say so, then my eligibility rule will say managers or above. So all managers or above people like executive directors, directors, vice president, etc. Everybody is eligible for this particular car allowance. Okay. That is what this eligibility rule at the plan level will specify. Now, when all the managers or above get the same amount, irrespective of their location, the answer is no. And how do we specify that? If you are a manager in the US, what will you get? $1,200. Right. If you are a manager or above in the UK, what are you going to get? £900. Right. That is why we use allowance plan profiles, and that is the same exact reason why we are going to use a compensation grade profile. Right. So it allows us to give the same compensation grade to everybody, but then, depending on their location or maybe some other factors, we are able to actually assign them a different range. This plan eligibility is important because without it, the employee will not even get this allowance, now what amount will it get? Will the employee get? Depends on what on the plan profile. Otherwise, if it doesn't meet any of this eligibility criteria, then they will get the default amount.
right. So manager, director, vice president, executive vice president, CEO, these are the management levels that I want. Okay. Now. Now, if I am seeing managers or above, would I create something which says non-managers? It makes sense. Right. It makes sense for at least consistency. So let's create one more. Which says non-managers. I will just copy it here. And I will say non-managers.